Hi, you know the Fender 5F1 Champ is probably the most uh, simple amp of all. Uh, so if you want to understand the schematics, uh, circuits of other more complex amps, it, it can be a good idea to compare it to this uh, basic amp. Uh, and that's what I have done today. And since I'm a Marshall guy, I have, uh, I have uh, adapted the, uh, all the schematics to the uh, style of writing that is usually find, found in, the, in the Marshall amps. So in this clip, I'll, I'll focus on explaining the uh, 5F1 circuit uh, written on this unusual form. Uh, and I, I will do some comparisons between the, the Champ and the, and the Super Lead and the, and the Deluxe. Uh, and if you think uh, this is an interesting way to explain schematics, then I have a bunch of other amps, High Watt, Orange, uh, 57 uh, Twin, uh, a bunch of different Marshall amps, Vox AC30 and, and so on, that we could write on this form and compare at what stage in the signal chain are uh, different functions implemented, you know, like uh, uh, tone stacks, volume controls, uh, different types of feedback loops, and so on. How, 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 uh, how is the integrity of the in initial tone uh, being kept uh, throughout the circuit? Compare that for different apps. All right, let's go. Let's assume that we want to play this guitar through this speaker. Then we need to plug the guitar into some amp. There needs to be some pre-amplification and some power amplification. And then we need to transform the signal so it can drive the speaker. Now all electrical components need a difference in potential to work. So in the uh, type of diagram I'm using here, I have a high voltage and a ground and uh, we're going to use these two to operate these components. 
Let's look at the high voltage rail first. When you plug your amp into the wall, in the United States you have 120 volts and 60 hertz mains. Uh, then you need a power transformer to uh, transform that to the voltage that you need to operate your amp. And for the uh, 5F1 champ that is 650 volts. Uh, and on the secondary winding side of the power transformer uh, there is a center tap dividing this into two 325 volt parts where one of them is shifted I think 180 degrees uh, so then when these signals come to the rectifier tube which is basically two diodes uh, it only lets through the positive parts these are the parts of the uh, secondary side of the power transformer is used to heat the filaments and to heat the uh, rectifier tube. Then, as you could see, the 325 volts DC coming off the rectifier wasn't pure DC, which would be a straight line. It, it was this rippled form instead. Uh, so because of that, along the power rail, we have a number of uh, filter capacitors, which filters out uh, this ripple and, and makes makes the signal closer to, to uh, a pure DC signal, a straight line. There are also two dropping resistors here uh, that together with the plate resistors make sure that the voltage is, has dropped to the cor correct value for the preamp tube and for the power tube and so on, and wherever it's needed. Having plugged into the amp, first we encounter the grid stopper resistors the purpose of which is to uh, reduce feedback, prevent high frequency parasitic oscillation and to limit the current that goes to the grid. Uh, if the grid becomes positive, uh, the tube, the preamp tube doesn't work properly uh, and you will go into blocking distortion and so on. Uh, the grid stoppers together with the capacitance of the tube forms a high frequency uh, low pass filter so it's, so it's, it's only the, the, the very highest frequencies that doesn't pass. The grid leak resistor is a reference to ground, and together with the plate resistors and cathode resistors, it bias the preamp tube, which we're going to check out in a second here. With higher values, less of the signal goes to ground, and uh, more of the signal goes to the tube, so you get more, more gain. Then we reach the preamp tube, which is a 12AX7, and that is basically two tubes in one container. The function of a tube is basically that we heat the cathodes so they uh, start emitting electrons, and then we charge the anode plates positively by connecting them to the uh, high power rail. Then between cathode and plate we put a grid and we feed the guitar signal to that grid. And then the uh, electron flow between cathode and anode, I, did, I mentioned earlier, is being shaped in the form of the guitar signal, but a much bigger version. So this amplified signal goes out on the plate and moves on to the next stage. The output of the tube is a plate current, but we need the voltage for the next stage of the tube. So the uh, plate resistors helps out in converting the uh, current to a voltage instead. Together with the other resistors along the power rail, the uh, plate resistors reduces the uh, B plus voltage to a level that is uh, suitable for the preamp tube. And the uh, 325 volts DC at the rectifier has been dropped down to about 150 volts here at the preamp tube plates. With a higher value on the plate resistor, more of the signal goes on to the next tube stage, so you get more gain. To be able to better control the flow of electrons between cathode and plate, we charge the uh, intermediate grid negatively relative to the cathode, 
and this is done by uh, putting a resistor on the cathode. So when the negative cathode emits electrons, negative particles, on the way to the, to the positive plate, they first encounter something that is even more negative than the cathode. So that, that kind of moderates the flow, controls it. With a smaller value on the cathode resistor, the more hot the tube is biased, and the more gain you get out of the stage. Cathode resistors, plate resistors, and grid leak resistors together bias the tube. So, back to the uh, audio signal coming off the uh, plate of the first stage of the preamp tube. On our way to the second stage, we encounter a coupling cap, the purpose of which is to, uh, to block DC and let AC pass through. The, the audio signal is AC and the, uh, the high voltage uh, is DC. And we don't want that on the, on the grid of the next stage. It will interfere with the um, biasing and, and probably damage the tube also. The coupling caps works as high pass filters as well. The lower the value, the more lows it filters out. Then we reach the volume pot and depending on how the player tweaks that one, a certain amount of the signal goes down to ground and a certain amount goes onto the next stage. Then we amplify the signal yet again through the next stage of the tube and the amplified signal goes through yet another coupling cap. Then on our way to the power tube we have another grid leak resistor. I explained the function earlier for the preamp tube. And the tube has a cathode resistor, also like the preamp tube, but here you have a bypass capacitor as well. If you use a small bypass cap you enhance the treble, but the higher the value you use, uh, the more you uniformly uh, increase gain for all frequencies. The 6V6 power tube is a beam tetrode, so besides a cathode, a plate and a grid, we also have something called a screen, which instead attracts the electrons to the plate, whereas the grid uh, repels them. The output signal coming off the plate of the power tube is high voltage but uh, with a very low current. So in the output transformer we transform this to a signal more suited for driving a guitar speaker which is about 2 to 3 amps and about 5 volts. Then we have something called a negative feedback loop. You take the output signal of the output transformer and feed it back to the cathode of the second stage of the preamp tube. And this is mainly for stability reasons, to tame the tone a bit.